This is how to install your baseline towers. You'll want a copy of your printed instructions. If you don't have a printed copy, you can download a PDF on our website, yakima.com. Here. Okay, installing your new towers is pretty simple, but it requires attention and care, so you create a super secure foundation for your Yakima system. The baseline tower mounts onto your bare roof car. You will need the towers, the appropriate base clips for your vehicle, your crossbars, the included torque tool, measuring tape, and the printed instructions. Before you begin, look up your measurements and settings online at fitlookup.yakima.com or in your base clip instructions. Write down in your instructions the M1, M2, M3, and M4 measurements and the settings for P1, P2, T1, and T2. Okay, you have your measurements. There are several types of measurements and settings you need to be aware of. The M measurements control the spacing of the towers on the crossbars and the spacing of the towers on the roof. The P settings control the angle of the crossbars and the towers. This helps keep the bars level on the roof. The T settings control the toe angle of the tower's pad. This helps fit the angle of your roof. We'll be referencing these five points of adjustment throughout the video. Clean? Okay, let's go. Pop the protective covers off each of the towers. Pull out the security tab. You'll hear a click. Now, snap in the appropriate bar seat into the top of each tower. Make sure it's the right one for your bar. You'll feel it snap into place. Place the bar adapter into the seat and attach it to the pitch bolt, making sure to align the bolt into the threaded hole. Turn over the tower to access the pitch bolt and use the tool to tighten it from underneath. If using Jetstream, tighten the adapter until it is level with the seat tabs. If using core bar or round bar, tighten the pitch bolt three times. Do that for each of the other towers. Next, attach your bars. Each bar is a little different. So be sure to follow the details in the printed instructions so you do this right. Next, you measure. Look at your instructions or go to fitlookup.yakima.com. Next, set your towers on the front crossbar to the correct M1 measurement. Use the measurements on the bar or the tape measure to set the M1 distance and to center the towers on the bar. Now, adjust the pitch angle of the crossbar in the tower to the P1 setting for your vehicle. Now tighten the pitch bolt with the torque tool, making sure to keep the correct P1 setting and M1 measurement. It should click, like a gas cap. Repeat for the other tower, verifying the P1 and M1 are correct. Next, repeat this for the rear crossbar and towers. Set the M3 distance using the measurements on the bar or tape measure, then center the towers on the bar. Set the rear bar pitch by adjusting the towers to the P2 setting. Tighten them all down with a torque tool on the pitch bolt. Next, snap your base pads onto the bottom of the towers. Make sure you are installing the front pads to the front bar and the rear pads to the rear bar. Now, set the toe position for the towers. Loosen the toe bolt and adjust the toe angle of the base pads. Fully tighten the towers on the front bar to the T1 position and the rear bar towers to the T2 position. If you're using a jet stream crossbar, then follow the instructions to cut and place the rubber infill for the bottom of the crossbar.
put your end caps on. Okay, time to get your rack on your car. First, make sure your aero bars are placed properly with the rounded end forward. The bar should be facing the front of the vehicle, like this. Now you need a clean surface for a secure hold. Place the front crossbar on your roof and measure out the M2 dimensions for proper spacing. Keep the tower centered left to right on the roof. Open the access doors on the tower and open the car doors. Slide the base clips into place. Give the clip a slight tug to make sure they're fully engaged and partially tighten the C1 bolt until the clip just touches the car. Not too tight, just snug. And now the other side too. Now partially tighten the C2 bolt until the bend on the clip moves up and just touches the car in the upward direction. Not too tight, just snug. Move to the other side and repeat. Now you can completely tighten the C1 bolt with the torque tool until it clicks at least three times. And on the other side, until it clicks at least three times too. Then tighten the C2 bolt completely with at least three clicks on both sides. Now, place the rear crossbar on the car. And measure out the M4 dimension to space it correctly from the front crossbar. Remember to keep the towers centered left to right on the roof. Now repeat the same steps as before. Insert the clips. Tighten the C1 bolt on both sides until the clips are snug on the car. Remember, not too tight. Tighten the C2 bolt on both sides until the clips are snug on the car in this direction. Then tighten the C1 bolts to full torque. And tighten the C2 bolts to full torque. Close the access doors. Make sure they're on there. The car should rock, the rack should not. Check that the C1 bolts are all at full torque one more time. And finally, put the covers back on the towers. This is the time to add your SKS locks if you have them. Done. Removal is easy. Pop off the covers. Fully loosen the C2 bolt and then the C1 bolt. Unhook and pull out the base clips. Then just lift the rack off and store it for later. 
Oh, make sure you know how tall your vehicle is with its racks and mounts, especially if they are loaded. What used to fit in your garage may not now. We know you're eager to hit the road, but please make sure you review your instructions to ensure a safe and fun adventure.